we have an absolutely massive update on Connor Bedard's injury and a now potential date that he could return to the Chicago Blackhawks. And we also have a potential major plan that Kyle Davidson has revealed for the future of this team at the end of the season going into next season. So we're going to be touching on all of that here very shortly. But before we do, we notice that 83% of you guys watching right now are not subscribed to the channel. So if you're looking for a spot to get all your news, rumors, trades, signings for the Chicago Blackhawks, you're in the right spot. Make sure to hit the sub button, stay a while, so you don't miss out on any of the breaking news as it happens. But like I said, first of all, we need to talk about this major news that we have for Connor Bedard, as well as a potential return date, because this is what we've been waiting for, frankly, since he got his injury. We've been waiting for him to come back, waiting for any signs of hope for this team, and we finally now have some. Now, I'm not going to read all of this. You can pause and watch, uh, give it a read if you want to. But this comes from Charlie Romeliotis uh, on an interview with Luke Richardson. He says that Bedard will remain in a non-contact jersey this week, but the hope is that he will be clear for contact next week and return to action shouldn't be much longer after. He goes on to say he'll need a few more practices, and uh, once he gets released from that, he'll be ready to go. Um, you know, he's, he's going to have a final doctor's appointment here soon at the end of this week or the beginning of next, which will kind of reveal um, if, if everything is good, if everything is ready to go. But he doesn't want to put a, a date on his return, but it could be February the 25th against Detroit. Uh, or he'll be back by then, hopefully, for Chris Shelley's retire number retirement and Patrick McCain's return to the United Center. So that right there is a major, huge, uh, a major, major sign for you know Connor Bedard and the Chicago Blackhawks. But we also have this one from Ben Pope, which is saying it could even be earlier the return of February twenty first or February twenty third. And today's the twelfth when recording this, so you know not too far away. Just a little bit over a week, but hopefully that is the case. Now, well, what do you think about these potential returns, the stipulations that Connor Bedard has in a return, and uh, the whole situation? What do you think about it? Well, I mean, we're, I'm just pretty much much going to see obvious. I guess he's been the shining star on the team, and you know everybody's kind of hoping, praying he comes back as quick as possible. And I mean, it's it's absolutely great news for, for the Blackhawks. I mean, you know, it makes it better too. We get to, to make content about him, so <laughs> uh, yeah, they they absolutely needed this. this. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, it, it was a really crucial return that he needed to come back. Although, you know, the team's going to get better, hopefully, with him back. They're still going to be in a really bad spot for the rest of the season, which is leading to a good draft pick. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of a win-win in this situation. You know, Bedard is not going to turn this team around by himself, but it is something you want to see. And we also have a little bit of a special news here that this is what Luke Richardson said as well at the end of this Charlie Romeliotis interview. He said, of course, Bedard will be wearing the face shield upon his return. Uh, he will be for a while, don't know how long, but I mean, I think it till he feels comfortable and the doctors feel comfortable. For So for those who don't know, the Conor Bedard bubble, the Conor Bedard face shield is a whole different breed of Conor Bedard. And being able to see this in the NHL will be something special for Blackhawks fans to see. We've seen it in the World Juniors with Team Canada, and having him come to the Blackhawks wearing his face shield... This guy is going to be electric while he's wearing that, but, you know, that, that that that's that's going to be something to leave for after, and you just witness with your own eyes. But we also have now a major plan that could be revealed by Kyle Davidson in an interview with Ben Pope. You know, Ben Pope went on in a uh, in an article giving uh, some ideas of what Davidson's future plan could look like and what Kyle Davidson will be trying to do. He goes with this one. There's many here. We're going to be making a later video on this because there's a lot to go into, but these are some of the key points right here in this interview that I think is really the uh, the main factor of what we could see this team turn into over the next season, uh, next few seasons. So he says two or three prospects. This is what the team could look like from uh, from day one of next season. He says, The NHL debut of Frank Nazar, current number one overall prospect for the Blackhawks, will likely come late this season. That's one thing fans should look forward to down the stretch, and if he plays well in training camp next season, he can immediately take over a top six role. Colton Dock and Landis Slager will be given opportunities to earn an opening day NHL roster next season, uh, although they're a long-term, more, uh, more like a, a versatile third-line guy. But, you know, the major part here is Frank Nazar. He will likely be coming over to the Blackhawks next uh, at the end of the season to see what he can prove. This is a major addition to this team, you know. Very important that he could be slotting into the top six right away. I really think that's the plan that Kyle Davidson is leaning towards. I kind of think they're banking on him being, uh, you know, that guy for the Blackhawks, the next guy up, I guess you could say. But as well as Landon Slagert and Colton Dock, I think those two guys also have a very good chance of being on that second line uh, and not just being third line guys. Those guys have been proven 
uh, proven what they've been able to do this season as well as, you know, the past few seasons together. Uh, not playing together, but, you know, both of them. And I think that this is a great opportunity for them as well to, you know, show what they're made of, make this team next year and get into the whole uh, the whole system and the new Blackhawks rebuild. But, no, I want to know what you think, first of all, about Frank Nazar coming over this season as well as what you think he'll contribute to this team uh, at the end of the, the season as well as next. Well, I mean, you know I'm really, really, really high on Nazar. I mean, we've been talking about him for a little bit. So far, far, I mean, a year over in, over in Michigan, I mean, just lighting it up about the NCAA. But... I, I think it's all dependent on if, if I guess if Michigan makes makes it far in the playoff playoff, he can make an impact on on this team and this uh, like this season when which is they need that need that I mean for development you, you know obviously the team team isn't great and all that and, and he would probably get a, a, a top six well, I would assume I don't, don't want to make any assumptions obviously so he, but gives him an opportunity, opportunity to come in compete and you know face off against against us in the league and you know maybe be really really good for his for his development so I, I really like Nate's our team. Um, for Doc and Slick, Sl- Sl- I don't think they'll make make the team this year. Actually, that's a lie. Sorry, I think Doc probably might make this this team this year. He's having a having a decent year in in Rock Rockford this year. Um, I'm kind of he hasn't been called up yet, but uh, for for Slager, I think sure he'll make the team easy, easily. Yeah, we also have another big part of this where I want to talk about. I think those guys, uh, they're they're a, a safe bet for this team right now. I think they're really the safe bet, safest bet in the prospect side as well as Oliver Moore. But you know those guys are just teetering the edge of being uh, turning pro. Well, Colton Doc is already there, but Landon Slager, I think, is the next guy up. But another big part of this one here is the free agency. One thing that we've been talking about for a long time and been very uncertain of what Kyle Davidson's plan will be. But we kind of have an idea here from this one. So Davidson's plan is, here's what he says on this. Davidson will not even flirt with Sam Reinhart and Jake Gensel of the world during this free agency cycle. His eyes will look farther down the board trying to nap some guys that mold as Nick Foligno, Andreas Athanasiu, and Max Domi. Decent offensive contributors who will be uh, accept a two-year contract. You know, something just to get, get the Blackhawks to the point where they want to be in the rebuild. He says, luckily for Davidson, there's a ton of pending UFAs potentially in the bucket. I'm not going to read all of these here, but some names that are, uh, you know, catching some people eyes. One for me is uh, Sean Monaghan, Jordan Eberle, and Tyler Toffoli. Three of those guys, I think, have really proven themselves over the past few seasons, but those would be excellent additions to this Blackhawks team for the next few seasons. But there are also female familiar faces like Sam Lafferty, Tavo Teravine, and a big one, and Domi himself. Some of those guys will re-sign with their current teams before July, and others will only consider contenders, but Davidson should be interested with a couple, uh, a couple offers right now. I think that's a big one, but a big part to note right here as well is Davidson has also demonstrated the affinity for taking on other teams' bad contracts and nurturing them into decent assets. Ola Dickinson, it wouldn't be surprised if the Blackhawks make another trade this spring or similar similar to those ones. And I think this is a very, very big piece here for the future of this Blackhawks team. A very big contribution. Uh, but like I said, we will be going further into this in a separate video. I really want to make a whole one on this because there's a lot to go through uh, in this article. So keep an eye for that and hit the sub button if you want to do see it. But now, what do you think about this plan? What do you think about the free agency style from Kyle Davidson here? It shows some names that have proven themselves, such as <laughs> Sean Monaghan this season, Tyler Toffoli over the past few seasons. He's really turned it around. You know, he seems to be getting better with age. But what do you think about this style of uh, yeah. acquisition from Kyle Davidson for the future of this team? I'm like of I'm a, like a fan of you know letting the young guys play, let them come up and let them develop. But I mean, we've seen this year how good like I guess I'll say Seth, Seth Jones. I'll let Seth Jones and those in this, uh, Felina, Jason Dickinson, those guys I see you know fairly well in in their roles. So maybe you know like a Chandler Stevenson type there, guy who's won Stanley Cup. Who's been in the league for a while? I'll, you know, know what what the league is like. I think maybe maybe he could he could uh, dash in Chicago. Um, I like Jordan Everly as well. Same sort of vibe. I, guess. I don't think Everly's won a Stanley Cup, but you know, been in the league for a while. Knows what what to do, what to do. Help guys, Bedard, Nazar. You know all you know all those all those young guys on the team. So I like those additions. To be honest with you. Yeah, you know it's a good forward pool because I think the defense right now for Chicago mm-hmm. is pretty solid. I think I don't think that needs to be touched. I think that works from in house. But the forwards, there's a lot of good ones available. Kyle Davis has a lot to think about and a lot of acquisitions that can be very key to the development, like you said, of these younger players coming into these uh, this team. Uh, over the next few seasons, but you know, like I said, for the third time, uh, we're gonna be making another big video on this. We want to discuss this in whole. We want to get a lot of thoughts from you guys. So make sure to hit the sub button if you haven't already. If you want to see that, 
uh, about the future of the Blackhawks. So this is going to be a really big key thing over the next few months, going into the offseason, going into the uh, trade deadline and into the draft, all of this stuff. So that's all, that's all we got here, but make sure to hit the sub button if you want to see that. But, you know, like I said, that's all we got. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you have a great day. See you later.